Good morning. It's Friday the 27th of August. Almost always these reflections end with words of prayer, or at least an invitation to pray. We affirm that prayer is one of the fundamentals of the Christian life, and yet at the same time it remains one of the most difficult and indeed puzzling things about our faith. It prompts many questions. If God already knows, why pray? Does prayer change God's mind? Why does God appear to answer some prayers and not others? When Albert Einstein was asked if there were any subjects left for original postgraduate research, he is said to have replied, prayer. Somebody should find out about prayer. And indeed there have been attempts to measure the extent to which it supposedly works or doesn't work according to whether a person is prayed for or not. Yet the very notion of prayer as something that works or doesn't work finds little biblical warrant, despite popular ideas about it being a last desperate attempt to salvage a difficult situation. I've been reading a little book called Entertaining Saints. It's written by Roger Quick, chaplain at St George's Crypt in Leeds, a charity which for 90 years has cared for homeless and vulnerable people in the city. I want to quote from one of his anecdotes which he entitles The Unpredictable Prayer. He writes this, Often people ask for prayer. Frequently we pray wherever we happen to be. Prayer is a normal thing and doesn't have to be fenced in between big black lines of let us pray and amen. Jesus often asked people what it was they needed and that is important. One lunchtime an older man came up to me whom I'd never seen before, distraught, desperate. He had just had a terminal cancer diagnosis. I took him through to the chapel and as we walked, I prayed, asking for discernment and, to be honest, fearful that he was hoping for a miracle cure. Sometimes we are moved to pray for miracles, but it's not a thing to do lightly or always. Death is only our final healing. We reached the chapel. I sat him down. I lit a candle. In the silence, it seemed to me that I was not being led to pray for the healing of the poor man's body, but we would leave all doors open for the Spirit's work. What do you want us to pray for? I asked him. I'm really worried about my daughter. Can we pray for her? He replied. Bless him. Knowing that he would die soon, he was concerned for his daughter. Our expectations are not necessarily those of other people. All we are called to do is to be open to them, to give them space to be, never to stop loving and then to love again, to acknowledge fear and then let it be overwhelmed by love. We prayed for his daughter and we prayed for his own healing in body, mind and spirit, even if that healing should be the last and greatest. He seemed much comforted as he left. I never saw him again. Perhaps one experience or story about prayer tells us much more than any wordy explanation or theory can hope to do. When all questions have been posed and all explanations exhausted, it is the lived experience of prayer which remains. It is the awareness that prayer is the means provided by God, the creator of galaxies, to know him better and to be in tune with his purposes. Knowing this, the doubts and objections fade away, though the mystery that remains is yet one more reason to trust and worship the infinitely wise and loving God. When Jesus' disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray, he replied in the words we now call the Lord's Prayer. You can find them in Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13, although there is a concluding phrase added later. 
So use that prayer now, slowly and thoughtfully, making each word your own. And may God bless you as you do so. Amen.